And, uh, you know, what we did out in City Hall was we started just a little low-class name-calling game with the mayor, and we got rude, crude, and very unacceptable. And within three days, we had media attention. We silently chalked Campos's press conference, which was beautiful. We got the video of that. Um, and we got media attention, and we, um, we changed our message from calling the mayor an asshat to uh, starting to put the actual messages down on the ground, but the police in the city will not allow Occupy to set up a protest. Mm -hmm. uh, they are scared for whatever reason. That you know, I don't know what the fear is of a tent. That's I, I'm seeing this huge amount of fear. Mm -hmm. uh, I came to the city like to two and a half years ago, and mm -hmm. within a week they turned me into a criminal for being before. I don't have a criminal record. I have health issues. I can't mm -hmm. work. How did they turn, criminalize you? Um, they gave me a camping ticket in a public space. They turned me into a criminal because I could not afford not to be in that public space. So it was, it was a park ticket, so there's mm -hmm. nothing I can do about that. What happened? Did they just, uh, what happened? Oh, they just issued me a ticket, and then the cop told me about the Occupy encampment, actually sent me to the encampment, which was kind of funny. I went to the encampment um, probably mid-October, uh, right after coming out of the hospital from bronchitis, and uh, settled into the Occupy encampment, learned that I wasn't the only one out there that actually had a problem with what's going on in our country. There's a huge amount of issues and people are actually talking about. The media doesn't work, so the only way we get the word out is little publications like what you're doing, which is great, and uh, word of mouth, we draw on the sidewalk with chalk, we reach hundreds of people. When we which just is okay for lunch. anybody else to do, but apparently they have the problem with it if Occupy yeah, does it or if, if anybody... Yeah, the, the mayor's personal bodyguard nailed yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we did not penetrate. We chalked on City Hall once. Uh, we put the mayor's an ass hat mm -hmm. and from yeah. Occupy so That's the only time we actually not did anything. Not too easy to, the to damage concrete with chalk. No. They, they, took it, uh, they took it wrong. They were very mm -hmm. offended by that. They said we were defacing. Then they wouldn't let us in City Hall because intent to chalk. They just make up the laws as they go along. Mm -hmm. uh, again, policy enforcement. Mm -hmm. Luke Thomas from Fog City Journal kidded about it. He said it was desecration. <laughs> yeah, they wiped it off. It was an improvement. <laughs> Say that on camera, please. So I think it was an improvement. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know we got attention. I don't know. I don't think we did anything uh, positive more than just get it back in the media. That was one of the main things. Mm -hmm. We've been under media blackout. The occupiers, which well, is... The media is really good. The mainstream media is really good at ignoring and... and um, making movements invisible. Mm -hmm. They're losing it right now because the movements are popping up. The truckers are going to go on strike. Uh, I'm hoping. Um, the, the two million bikers that just took D.C., I mean, nobody knows about that. I've got it online all over the place, but when I look at the news, nobody mentions it. There's minor media coverage, and that's a huge story. Uh, the, the country is rising up, and mm -hmm. Occupy with the media blackout needs to get the, the word out to the homeless because the occupiers, which is us, we're the ones that actually are homeless. We camp, we protest, we live this whole thing, and we're out there fighting for the homeless. But what the police are doing is they're going and telling the homeless it's Occupy that's causing all the come, all, all the aggression and stuff right now in the police. They've got it going on over here at uh, Red Cross from City Hall. They really hit the homeless hard, and they're hitting the homeless hard right now at the waterfront in the Barbera area mm -hmm. because that's where we usually are. That's our territory is, is the, the 101 Market Street area. Mm -hmm. um, so they're, they're hitting, with, and the water truck is out every day. Uh, occupiers have been hit with the water truck. I don't, I don't know what the law is. I've heard that it's illegal to use the water truck on people. Yeah, I, I, I thought that was a battle that was fought and won several yeah, years they, ago. They put a homeless guy in the hospital with it. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, Nick got hit with it at least once, he said. And I saw the water truck miss one of the homeless people that wasn't an occupier by about five feet. And then he just raised it up over him. But it was, it was definitely uh, intimidating. Yeah. Um, talking about Nick, I was telling Ken about when you guys occupied, what was it, 888 Turk? Yeah. 888 Turk. 888 Turk. Yeah. And people that went back there for a second um, occupy was permanently banded from mm -hmm. Turk Street? Yeah, it was like 2,000 yard uh, circumference. 2,000, okay. Yeah. okay. And on that, 
the Turk Street I'm sorry, thing. I was, mm-hmm. It was I a setup. It was <laughs> the first Turk Street action I was arrested at, all the charges were suspended at that one. Mm-hmm. Uh, the second uh, Turk Street action, those suspended charges were put back in place on just a select few people, mm-hmm. not the entire group that got arrested. Yeah, there the were four charge. of them. Yeah. And it was, it was targeting those four in particular. Mm-hmm. And everything, because Jesse threw the bricks off the roof, everything was, was kind of all the brick thrower and nothing about the fact that they selectively are prosecuting people that they perceive to be the leaders of Occupy. And the, the thing about Occupy is it's a bunch of little groups of people that are taking individual actions with no real organization. Mm-hmm. Uh, the occupiers are organized enough that um, we can actually take effective actions. We are mm-hmm. the group that set up the Postal Union March that went and took the post office, and we were, mm-hmm. we were very big in helping save the post offices. Which there. post office? Mm-hmm. Uh, we took the, the uh, main, what, what is that post office over there? Uh, right around the corner of yeah. the yeah. yeah. The, the uh, uh, 101. That, that's not 101. The Tenderloin oh, post, post office? The post office. That's the general delivery? That's yeah, the one Yeah, one on high. Yeah, one on I never heard about that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and I just uh, just ran into Angela on the bus, and she was ready. The Postal Union mm-hmm. supports the occupiers. Mm-hmm. They yeah. they gave us food and money last year to help the encampment at the 101. It's really good to have that type wow, of thing. Wow, that's so, terrific. Yeah, they gave us legal post offices, too. We had 101 Market Street, Suite A. That was Occupy SF, and then we had mm-hmm. something on Montgomery as well. I don't know what Rob said that address is. Now, the reason we did that is because during these police raids, we got sick and tired of them stealing all of our stuff. So we were going to raise it up to the federal level, take that mm-hmm. post office box. They did. We mm-hmm. never were able to do anything with it. So, But we, we could have used that, and we could have got the Postmaster General on the, the police department. We're could you still? I, I don't know if it's, it's possible. It's been a year, maybe. You could try it again. Yeah, we could try I need to go review the footage. And everything that, that I'm telling you, we have documented on film, mm-hmm. um, which I need to get backed up. The videos damn the city. They are very powerful videos that show the city has no regard for the homeless. All they want to do is move them out so that the rich mm-hmm. can't see them, you know, the tourists can't see them. And what they don't understand is the homeless have solutions to these problems. The one thing that we did at the occupation last year for eight months, we held the 101. It is the record in the country for an occupation from the Federal Reserve. Even more than mm-hmm. New York? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we held it down. The, um, the things, though, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, we had discussions. Little groups of people who were homeless for whatever reason came mm-hmm. through. We had about 500 come through and just talked, and that's all we did. And through the talking, we came up with these ideas. We came up with a solution to the problem. We have a piece of property in the city. of It's an abandoned city street out in Bayview. It is a four-lane street that goes to L-shaped. And it can hold, it had an occupation uh, back in the 90s, I think. It can hold 1,500 tents and a boatload of RVs. We can knock those two issues down. Where is it? And it's not uh, public it's, if you don't want it to be. So it's, uh, what, where's so the retreat? It's at the end of, at the end of Williams on 3rd. At the end of Williams on 3rd? Yeah. Okay. yeah, you can look on your map. It's okay. actually marked on the map so and it's in green. In fact, it butts right up against on the National Park that follows the shoreline up there. Okay. It's so in the so Bayview. Yeah. Uh, it's Mother two Browns blocks down from Mother yeah, Browns. Two yes. blocks down from Mother Browns. Gotcha. Now, when we occupied that, we had it for. Uh, over three months last year, we had uh, about, what, 45 yeah, people yeah. out there, 20 yeah, tents. 20, 20, 20. We cleaned the entire property. Like we started doing some landscaping. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we turned it into a home, and it was a drug and alcohol-free encampment. That was a major yeah. part of what we were doing out there. We are trying to show them. We were going to do community garden and everything. They found out about us, and they nailed us right away. Mm-hmm. Uh, they found out it was an Occupy encampment, but it was totally secret until about two weeks before that. We were trying to get support and try to get people to jump on board with uh, some urban landscaping and stuff out there. Actually, yeah. there's video online of uh, Mona Lisa showing uh, t- uh, showing everybody uh, doing a tour around that camp. It was right before it was the police took it out. Mona Lisa? So, I'm sorry, did I say Mona Lisa? I mean, uh, Kelly was out there. Mo- Mo- uh, uh, Anana Mama. Oh, Anana Mama. Yeah, yeah. Some yeah, eyebrow video, video about there. Yeah, that's yeah. on that's on YouTube. But the thing about that is that it's just like with the harassment in the city. When mm-hmm. they came to, to raid that camp, mm-hmm. they wound up on um, backing up a dump truck. Mm-hmm. They wound up putting our stuff directly into it. You know, they got compacted, it opened up, and they stuffed more. They did that repeatedly until the BPW showed up. Now, 
I've got them on video. The, the dump truck before there. Before, it was there when the police were there. Yeah, I got them on video. I let them know about this law because it had just come down. And I let them know about the 647 and that, was, that was after the Ninth Circuit ruling? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So they took your stuff and you never got it back? They crushed it. Yeah.